Like a returning player on their first day of another season, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, you smell that? Disappointment. We're back at it again. Internet, let's talk about my next 10 disappointing returning players in Survivor. You may have noticed that in the 1.0 video, I didn't mention season 20, Heroes vs. Villains. Well, let's change that. The first disappointing returning player on this list is the first boot, Sugar who was unanimously ousted in the premiere episode. A fun little bit of history here, I went into this season rooting for Sugar more than anyone. The last season I had watched was Gabon on a binge as I hastily caught up in my pursuit to watch every season before Heroes vs. Villains. And so, when Sugar went out first after crushing it in Gabon, yeah, I was left wanting. But Sugar was never really a strong player, and I, I kind of have to reason that being the first boot of an all returnee season is a little different than everyone else. Someone has to go first and disappoint me. And knowing that, her exit didn't really sting as much. I also kind of felt like Gabon was a nice single season story arc. But yeah, she's in my top 20. And Sugar, she just start chatting up again. And not whispering, but chatting up loud. I'm being flirted with, but I'm just not interested. Wherever I'd go, two seconds later, she'd show up there. She's becoming a bit annoying. First person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Sugar. Sugar? The tribe has spoken. Heck, you know what? Let's just rattle them off. My next two returning players are also from season 20, and they are Stephanie LaGrosa and Randy Bailey from the Heroes and Villains tribe. Stephanie was a huge presence in Palau season 10, one of the biggest players in Survivor history, and she nearly won the game the next season in Guatemala. So she's coming back as this bona fide major hero, and then she goes after two episodes. And she's ingloriously sent out with James just mad at her. Stephanie was out of her element, and like outside of her pitching her restaurant at the reunion, I just can't say that I got much else from this return. Tom Colby and myself can pull in Surrey and Candace. Maybe I am safe and we're gonna get our five strong and come out of this all right tonight. Second person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Stephanie, Steph, the tribe has spoken. Get some advice. Next time y'all lose a challenge, a little less cursing off your tribe might help. The third boot of season 20, Randy was a major villain in Gabon who scorched the earth, took no prisoners, and didn't really care about what anyone thought of him. And he still doesn't to this day, he probably doesn't care what I have to say either, but Pretty much, we got none of that in Heroes vs. Villains. Yeah, he did throw his buff in the fire, we did have that, and I like that. Randy was just another case of early boot-itis. There just wasn't enough screen time to propel Randy to the spotlight. And then you couple that with some of the biggest characters in Survivor on his tribe, and you're left with a season with Randy being the least memorable villain on a tribe full of villains. And if you had just watched Gabon, you would find that difficult to believe. Poverty is a threat right now, but if we overlook her, we we could all pay dearly for not taking care of business right now, and by taking care of business, I mean getting her out of here as soon as possible. Third person voted out of Survivor Heroes versus Villains. Randy. Randy? The tribe has spoken. The fourth returnee on my list was briefly mentioned in the previous video, and that is Eric Reichenbach from season 26, Kara Moen, Fans vs. Favorites 2. Eric went from being a major fan to a returning favorite, which was always a narrative arc I was hoping we'd see. He was also the one player, other than maybe Natalie, that I wanted to see return from Micronesia. How would he fare after being duped by the Black Widow Brigade? What had he learned for his second go around? Would he become as lethal as the players he was sized up against in his first season? Well, the answer to all those questions is irrelevant because Eric was barely on Karamoan in the first place. Just like Brenda, Eric Eric was nearly invisible for most of the season and only emerged at random times to tell us that he was kind of just chilling. That was his strategy. He wanted to lay back and win, kind of like Luigi in that Mario Party gif. And to be fair, he reached the final five and almost won if not for a bad reaction to some penicillin, so there's that. I think that's also probably why I'm not as disappointed with him as I was with Brenda, although they're both in my top 20 either way. That final five barrier will never be breached. Brother, after 36 days and your second time playing, your second time, you started as a fan, you ended up as a favorite, you're not gonna finish this one either. I wouldn't have wanted to share this with anybody else. Thanks, Steven. So proud of you. I really right. appreciate it, friend. You're a challenge monster now. <laughs> That's a you gotta take up the reins. Yeah. Get out. Same goes for my fifth returnee, and that is Rupert Bonham, 
the lovable tie-dye pirate who originated back in Season 7, Pearl Islands. Rupert did return in Season 8, All-Stars, and then Season 20, Heroes vs. Villains, but in both of those seasons, he went deep and almost could have won had a challenge or two shook out differently. But then we get to Season 27, Blood vs. Water, where Rupert makes his fourth appearance, and kind of similar to Ozzy in Game Changers, I don't think anyone expected Rupert to be such a disappointment, let alone the first boot. The circumstances around it were a bit strange, though, Rupert's wife Laura was voted out on day one as a twist and Rupert was allowed to switch with her on Redemption Island. Rupert did exactly what I expected Rupert to do and he did switch with her and then he lost the first duel of the season, not something I expected him to do, and was out of the game by episode two. This return is such a footnote in his legacy and when you know that he has a lot to offer to a season and then he goes first, you can't help but feel like what even was the point? To put myself in a position where I am not safe is killing me. But I would rather have myself in this position than I would my wife. Laura deserves to play the game. Rupert. I can't believe it. First one out. Never went to tribal, never got a vote. Rupert, grab your stuff. Throw your buff in the urn on your way out. It is time for you to go. Which leaves me with my sixth returnee from the same season, Blood vs. Water, and that is Kat. Which might shock some of you given she became infamous for her post-elimination cries about not being dateable because she didn't make the merge. The problem I have with Kat on this season is that that is about all that she was good for this season. Kat did not go to tribal much. She voted in the majority the one time that she did. She wasn't a power player and then was switched to a female-led swap tribe and was the first one voted out. Unlike the BLT that she bought at the auction in her first season, there is little to chew on this time with her return and I'm just very much left wanting. And I know she has the capacity to be a fun character. We just didn't get much of it this time. Six person voted out of Survivor Blood versus Water. Kat. Cat, the tribe has spoken. I think I'm more worried about it. I feel like the is going to be so disappointed. No one wants to date someone who doesn't make the merge. Please don't doubt me. Oh, come on. My number seven disappointing returnee is from season 31, Cambodia Second Chance, and it's Shireen, who was just on the previous season, Worlds Apart, and was one of the bigger characters of that season. Shireen was an outcast on the bottom, had some horrible stuff set her way, and it was cool to see her get a second chance so soon. She was fresh in my mind going into Cambodia, and then she was just picked off second with barely any presence. Spencer eclipsed her as he was in a similar situation, but Spencer went on to dominate screen time Meanwhile, Shireen was just an afterthought. I was rooting for her, I wanted more, and I just didn't get it. I feel sick to my stomach about the fact that I very, very well may go home, and the only option that I have is voting for Spencer. I don't wanna vote for Spencer. Second person voted out of Survivor Second Chance. Shireen. No. Shireen, the job is spoken. Following Shireen on the same season, Cambodia, it's Monica, who originally played on season 19, Samoa. Monica was one of the two more random female picks of the season alongside Kelly Wentworth. There was this notion going in that she was a big question mark and hopefully she would surprise us. I mean, heck, she got Russell Hans to sweat a bit on her first stint, and that's pretty noteworthy given he kind of ran the table when her tribe merged with his. I didn't expect a lot from Monica, but was hoping for the best, and then when I saw Kelly Wentworth give us gold and really play her heart out, I couldn't help but feel like Monica was paling in comparison. She got into a disagreement with Kimmy over clams. Yeah, she's in my top 20. I'm not living day to day. I'm more looking at the end of the game and I still have to keep my options open. She's a snake in the grass. Yeah. She's, she's a snake in the grass. We gotta, the three of us, blindside Monica. In a sense, Monica and Wigglesworth are liabilities in the same way. You can't count on Monica at all. She's gonna flip and flop all over the beach. So it's hard to weigh which one is more dangerous. Fifth person voted out of Survivor Second Chance. Monica, need to bring me your torch? <sighs> Monica? Trump spoke.
Number nine is from season 38, Edge of Extinction, and oh boy. As much as I enjoyed the actual episode of Aubrey's Ouster, how the editors framed it mostly from her perspective, I can't deny it was unfortunate to see her leave so early and in such a disappointing fashion. Blindsided with an idol and an extra vote in her pocket, completely snowed by the newbies, Aubrey was the woman who many argued for years should have won her first season. The controversy that arose from her loss was massive. And then she returned as a captain of her tribe alongside Joe and it just didn't pan out. It got the best of a... I'm used to playing from behind and I don't know how to play when I have cards in my hand. I almost don't know what to do when something somewhat positive happens in this game. And I feel like that means I'm gonna be voted out tonight. Maybe I have to have a little faith that maybe just a little bitty thing can go right. Fifth person voted out a survivor, Aubrey. You guys are unbelievable players. Wow. Damn. Aubrey, Trump has spoken. And then lastly, we finish it off with the most disappointing returnee from season 40, Winners at War. Because even though I don't really want to do it, at least one winner had to make this top 20, and they did. I'm not talking about Natalie, who was the first boot, but then came in second. I'm not talking about Amber, who is technically first in the boot order, who mostly showed up to play for Boston Rob. It was sweet and kind of fitting for her three season arc. I am talking about the winner of season 11, Survivor Guatemala, Danny Boatwright. I have said several times before that Danny is one of the most underrated winners in Survivor history, and she played a very impressive winning game. Dot, dot, dot in her first season. Her return appearance nearly 30 seasons later did not bode as well. She was a bit of an odd fit on this cast and it showed. She was old school, but not a huge name or presence like the others. She was on the outs of the Minority Alliance rather quickly and then was voted out at their second tribal council. I had high hopes for her and expected her to fare a lot better than this, which could be said for a lot of the winners, but it's most pertinent to Danny, especially given what I've said about her on my channel. I feel like I've been left out. And now, I'm not even sure about my old school alliance. I feel like it's me going home tonight. It's not hard to pick up on that when people are walking off and talking and nobody's including you on anything. Third person voted out a survivor, winners of war. Danny, that's five, that's enough. You need to bring me your torch. Danny, the tribe has spoken. And that's it. Those are my top 10 most disappointing returning players in Survivor. 2.0. Or it's the second half of my top 20. Drop the dot, keep the zero. Regardless, let me know of any other disappointing returning players who I may not have mentioned, but definitely disappointed you. I know there's definitely more out there. Another thank you to my patrons for returning again and again, and maybe even surpassing Boston Rob at this point. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to drop the ball on your returning appearance on your way out, and I will see you in the next one. Once I maybe consider making a video on the top Top 10 least disappointing. Look, I'm gonna reason with you. Francesca gets voted out first twice. The bar was so low, literally could not be disappointed. Impossible. She kind of made survivor history for maybe not the best reason, but she wasn't voted out first this time because she's a bad player. She was voted out because she's a huge threat. I mean, I definitely saw the humor of the situation <laughs> because it is pretty funny. I guess I have a lot of potential <laughs> at Survivor, which is going to remain unrealized. <laughs>